Wow, thanks for that, Blair. Um, so much I could talk about just from being here in the last, hearing the last two um, um, presentations and, and uh, what do you call them, panels. Uh, I am going to try and put some facts on the table that I know about as I, as I go through this. But what I what I really am interested, what I really wanted to do here today, is talk about where we're going. And um, I'm going to try and rebut some of the things I've heard. I'm going to try and agree. Uh, along the way, just because I've spent my life for the last 15 years immersed in the in the provincial innovation system, some of you insulted me badly. Some of you gave me high compliments through all that. But um, anyway, here goes. Uh, what I really want to tell you about is uh, where we're going, and with the focus on transformative technology. But to do all that, I want to tell you about a little bit where we've come from, and um, uh, to try and. Let you know that we're trying. There actually is a systematic approach. Sengen's an important part of it. But uh, of course, I work for the province, so of course I have to be a provincial booster. Here's some here's some things about the digital economy. Um, and if you look at where it's going, it, it feels like the economy is really digital now, uh, but it's actually it, we're actually still at the beginning of the process. Maybe we're 10 or 15 percent of the way there. And so it's really starting to accelerate now. And you can see some of the numbers there about what's happening around the number of things that have to be connected. And those numbers really are not comprehensible by the human mind. 25 billion embedded intelligent systems, uh, however many things are going to be connected to the, to the Internet of Things. But there's still a massive opportunity here. And um, uh, we're making some investments in transformative technology to help grab that opportunity. So um, uh, the last presentation was, was the last uh, uh, panel was really good. Scaling companies is, in fact, I think, the problem we have to address now, which is a, which is a part of the whole thing. I am going to be a bit, I mean, I'm going to be fairly technology focused about what, what I'm going to talk about. But in fact, Ontario is pretty well positioned. Okay, so on the, you, you heard some good stuff around talent. We have been investing in talent like crazy, and somebody could Google this and correct me if I'm wrong. I don't have the data in front of me, uh, but I think I'm if. So let's, let's assume Kanata and Ottawa are the same town, okay? Just, I, don't, I don't know if there's a Kanata, Ottawa antagonism or something, but um, uh, if there is, forgive me. Uh, but I think I'm standing in the highest educated city, in the highest educated province, in the highest educated country in the world. I think that's true. So if you, if you process that for a second, that's a pretty awesome platform from which to try and tackle this this, this next version of the new economy. Um, but we do have a really highly skilled workforce. And I, and I think what I just said is true. Somebody look it up and, 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 and tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Ottawa was the highest, had most PhDs per capita in Canada. Um, uh, but it, it ranks very high, very high up there globally as well. And, and I, actually, I think the differentiator in this next, this next generation of the economy is going to be people, and, and uh, thank goodness we've been investing there. But we have the second largest ICT cluster in North America. If you look at uh, Toronto, Waterloo, um, Ottawa, and yes, I'm going to use the T word. I know I'm in Ottawa. Um, uh, it's the second largest ICT cluster in North America, second, number of, second highest number of ICT firms. It's not Silicon Valley. I know that. I get that. We all understand that Silicon Valley has this unique dynam dynamicism and, and size and momentum that can't be replica replicated no matter how hard we try. But there's, there's a good base here. And we have lots of good things going. I actually feel like, um, at least I'm going to speak for my government, the, the province has done a good job of trying to create and simplify the world for entrepreneurs and do good things to make, make it easier to start, grow, and scale a company uh, from, from Ontario. So a little bit about the arc of innovation. And I, I actually have been around doing this since before 2001. Uh, Brad Defoe, who's here, who now works for Invest Ottawa, he and I were together back then, inventing the stuff on the back of an envelope, by the way, not a napkin. Uh, I'll introduce Musfiq over there, stand up Musfiq, he's, he's here with me today um, in the, the little group that I now run, the Strategic Program Development Delivery Office. But the arc of innovation, at least our in innovation system, is kind of important. Let me just start in 2006, where we really got going, investing this thing we called at that time the Tierra Commercialization Network where we wanted to create the focal points for entrepreneurs in as many places as possible. So we created this system of regional innovation centers, and we really tried to put all of our resources in those places. So Invest Ottawa, Communitech, Mars, you would recognize, but WeTech in Windsor, 
Uh, there's innovation wealth. Uh, in some cases, they're small, but what we're trying to do is create the focal point for entrepreneurs. That's, where, that's the clubhouse where they go. Most importantly, they can, they, can, they can mix with their peers and learn a lot from their peers. Uh, but we did it just outside the university, so it was closer to talent. But what happens when you create the, the clubhouse where they go is the angel investors show up, the venture capital investors show up, and the flywheel starts to spin and spin really fast on its own. And we injected some programming in there, largely, uh, largely a mentorship, uh, where we, we had entrepreneurs and residents at, at these regional innovation centers. But in fact, um, what happens is, the, the, the cool thing about entrepreneurs is, when they've had a success or a couple of successes, they want to give back. And so this was the place where we would, we would start to manage networks of mentors, assign them to companies, and all that taken together, we actually have developed a, a very significant uh, 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 systematic way of uh, helping startups uh, start, grow, and get capitalized. Um, we've done some reviews of this, uh, and when we looked at the companies that were, uh, uh, had some interventions in these, this network it, it, at these regional innovation centers, um, you know, they often they had higher sales. Virtually everything about the company was higher, uh, but when it came to investment, it was higher by about 500%. So, so the combination of mentorship and other, pro, uh, other uh, interventions was helping entrepreneurs hone the business plan but become very clear about what they were doing, and that really helped them raise a lot more capital, which helps companies grow a lot faster. So uh, that, we turned that to, into the Ontario Network of Excellence uh, in 2008. That's what it's called. It's still branded as that, by the way. You'll see that logo when you walk into Invest Ottawa. Um, and, and another thing we did, somebody was talking about um, uh, entrepreneurship in our education system. We haven't gone that far down in the K-12 system, but on campus, and I'm really proud of, of what we were able to do, where it was right around four or five years ago, we realized that the fastest growing vector of knowledge transfer from universities and colleges was actually student entrepreneurs. And so we said to ourselves, if we ever get the opportunity, we've got to do something there. And in fact, the government uh, uh, gave us $100 million to launch the Ontario, what do we call it, the Youth Entrepreneurship Strategy. With that, we created a series of campus linked accelerators on some of the universities, but on, on every single university and college campus now, there is either a campus linked accelerator or an entrepreneurship center of some kind. So this is a place where students can go to, exer to exercise their, their entrepreneurial uh, uh, wants. In the first year, if my numbers are correct, and somebody, there's a big report out there that, that has all this uh, uh, documented, but I think there was about a thousand companies that got started through in these, in these campus linked accelerators and, and cent, uh, centers of entrepreneurship. The top 20 companies raised over $120 million just in the first year that we had this, this program going. That was three or four years ago. That's still growing. We, we, uh, one of the things we did, and this is again, we had these regional innovation centers, and our strategy has always been build regional uh, innovation systems. We, we told the universities and colleges, you have to go and work with the regional innovation centers uh, so that you start to coordinate what's happening with entrepreneurs in the region. And so between the regional innovation centers as, as the big clubhouse, like I said, like I said Mars, Communitech, Invest Ottawa, and now at Bayview Yards, uh, these are pretty large centers. Um, and to, you know, across the 18 in any one year, they're probably spinning off between 1,000 and 1,500 tech companies, um, and, it, and it's fairly robust. Uh, so we sort of ticked the box on having um, uh, 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 a dynamic uh, startup entrepreneurship system. Now, just a bit of, uh, um, this is a bit of a rebuttal. Somebody on the stage earlier said, we're not a very entrepreneurial place. Uh, there's lots of data there uh, 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 on that. And uh, the last study I looked at uh, was the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor. Uh, Canada was actually the most entrepreneurial country in the world, ahead of the US. Um, and that was measured by rates of entrepreneurship. So this is actually what we've, what we've been dreaming about for 10 or 15 years. You can say a l there's other things embedded in that data. So we're a ver actually a very entrepreneurial country. Uh, where we fall short is we don't have the same aspirations as our American friends south of the border. That is, I think, reflective in where we have trouble scaling and lots of other things. People were talking about risk aversion. People were talking about not enough salespeople. 
Uh, it, actually is, it, 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 it actually is all of those based on what we've learned so far. And I think it's a lack of talent, middle management talent. You can have a great entrepreneur who's really great at pulling a company together, but if he can't find the talent to build out the systems that these growing companies need, middle managers, uh, it's difficult. And uh, the problem with that is you can't snap your fingers and fix it. Uh, it actually takes almost a generation to get, to get a, a whole generation of an ecosystem growing and spinning and gr growing up those people to make it work. And I think that was, uh, that's about the same time frame with our startup ecosystem is we rank up there with the top four or five in the world, um, uh, but it took us a decade to get there. So um, bottom line, uh, whether you agree or not, in almost, every almost outside the door of every major university college uh, pairing, we have a regional innovation center, great uh, startups happening, uh, starting to build the scale-up ecosystem, um, and that is, that is the base from which we're looking at how are we going to launch tran the transformative technology initiatives. So here we have it, um, tick the box on a startup ecosystem, addressing the scale-up ecosystem, we're starting to put putting some programs in place, and, and by the way, Capital is not the big issue, it is about that. It is often about talent. It is often about can we make it easier for them to do business in the valley? Can we connect them to other ecosystems like New York, Boston, uh, London, Shanghai, um, where they can go and get the things that they can't get in their own ecosystem and bring it back here? So that's happening. Um, we also have been working, so that's, I, I like to call that the horizontal space where that goes right uh, across the province I like it in 18 different places. Uh, corporate innovation, more and more now, and this is where we're leading with the transformative technology stuff, we're trying to link that base of small scaling companies to the large companies, and that's exactly what Sengen is doing, and one of the reasons why we're partnering with Sengen in, in the transformative technology platform. So let me go now to the transformative tech platform ecosystem that we're trying to build uh, and layer it on top of this provincial system of, of regional innovation centers. So, um, of course, uh, ministers, politicians, they hear a lot about these things, the things that you see in the slide, quantum computing and artificial intelligence, and you really have to come up with a framework to think about this where you get a big fat headache. I like to call this the Tylenol slide because it helps you think about transformative technology and what to do with it. But if you look uh, 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 a little closely, you see the blue boxes are more platform type things like artificial intelligence, 5G, quantum computing, next generation networks. Uh, the green layer is the application layer. And you really have to differentiate and know whether, are you investing in a platform that's gonna feed lots of things or are you working in an application layer that's trying to grab a bunch of tools to put solutions together? Okay, so we need to, we need to separate those two when we think about how to do this. And by the way, this also is a really important slide to help decision makers understand we have a strategy here and, and we're trying to invest in the platform layer first, because it's gonna feed the solution layer, and that's where we're at. The little red check marks, by the way, uh, indicate that we've got some investment, in, or we've got something moving, uh, at various stages of maturity, but it gives us a way of actually sort of tracking. Are we making investments and are we starting stuff across a wide enough spectrum? So I kinda like that slide. It really helps us uh, talk to folks, help them understand how to think about transformative tech, because it can be very confusing. Here's the, uh, here's the set of investments that, we're on, that we, are, we are making and implementing now. Uh, you are all here because you're a part of Sengen. Um, so that's one of them, so 5G, uh, next generation networks. And you know, uh, uh, I like to explain it, the uh, next generation networks to the politicians or, or folks who aren't techie. By the way, I'm not a techie either, um, is when 5G is up and running, and we're slamming the pipes with a thousand times more data that's moving a thousand times faster, we have to figure out how to get more stuff through the pipes. And they kind of get that. It's a bit of a plumbing analogy, I guess. Uh, but really critical. And if we can be first and early in some of those things, uh, uh, we will spawn and or help lots of companies stay in the market. Artificial intelligence, you heard about Vector. We started with 50 million. We added 30 million as a result of the, of the, um, uh, the Amazon thing. Uh, but uh, lots of people, talk, there's been some talk about, about machine learning uh, and Vector. Uh, the simple story there is Vector exists for industry. 
But to get there, you have to build the academic prowess first. And, and you, 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 if you go to their website, you'll see announcements. They've hired about eight world-class people from around the world to bring them here. Uh, the next step is to now focus on how do we help the provincial economy and specific sectors absorb the technology faster. That's the next step. So think reverse co-op where they may run a three-week program with um, uh, bankers or construction people on how to absorb machine learning and how to deploy it, deploy it in your industries. But it's definitely all about industry. Autonomous Vehicle Innovation Network, uh, self-explanatory. Uh, what, you, what you may not know, we, build, we still build more cars than any other jurisdiction in North America. If Ontario were a country, I think we'd be one of the fourth or fifth largest auto producers in the world. We actually build a lot of cars here still, and we gotta, be, we gotta catch this wave and, and be a part of it if we're gonna be in that game in the next 15, 20 years. IBM i3, some of you would know about this already, but this is where, um, with a partnership with IBM, uh, companies get access to their Bluemix, uh, their Bluemix garage suite of data management tools, access to data centers, access to Watson, and, and that program is being delivered across a number of our regional innovation centers, but it's a nice add-on to some of these others. Uh, we'll be doing some stuff in quantum. We have a small piece going at cyber. Cyber is an area we know we need to do a lot more. We're trying to figure that out. And, and advanced manufacturing is another area uh, where we know we need to do a lot. Um, let me put some, somebody we were talking about, about are we laggards in, in technology adoption? I think that's variable. I think in this city, that's not true. In manufacturing, it's true. We have nine straight quarters of declining investment machinery equipment. We spend half as much on software as American companies. Our productivity rates are 25%. Productivity growth is 25% that of uh, US companies. It's pretty bad. Uh, so in some sectors, we're bad. In some, I think we're just as good as anywhere else in the world. I think Canada and Ottawa are good. Are good uh, our, our tech community, I think, is just as good any, as any other tech community in the world. That's my instinct. Um, so what are we doing? Our job right now is to turn this set of initiatives into this, um, which is how do we turn this into tools that a company anywhere in Ontario can grab and use and put together to produce solutions that they can sell and make money at. Uh, it's about that simple. So let me explain a, a bit more how, we're, how we will do that. Um, hmm. So uh, I'll keep going. Um, you recall the 18 regional innovation centers that I talked about. So we have this network of RICs. Uh, that's where responding companies, that's, that's where entrepreneurs are going here in, 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 in Ottawa, Canada. It's the Bayview Yards, and a uh, lot's happening here in Canada. Uh, but, so imagine you've got that, that, the, the 18 clubhouses where the companies are. And by the way, that's where we're trying to consolidate resources. There was some discussion in the earlier panel about it's very disconnected. Uh, this is where OCE is. We, we co-locate with IRAP. As I said, it's where the angel investors hang out. With virtually every regional innovation center, there is an angel investing syndicate that hangs out there and is making investments, and we've seen a, a big uh, a growth in those angel investments. Uh, so we've got that. Um, I, I, you see all the platforms that we're trying to build. So each one of those, so Vector, uh, IBM Innovation Incubator, Next Generation Networks, they will be producing tools that we can hopefully put online and give companies access to. And Orion, I think you all know what Orion is. It's, a, it's Ontario's subset of Canary. Uh, a big part of this will be now connecting every regional innovation center to the Orion backbone, uh, connecting all of these uh, transformative technology platforms to Orion, and voila, you've, uh, these companies will have access to the tools and big, and big data capability that they need to be able to start developing solutions uh, in this space. So, um, very much um, as we've done in the past 15 years, uh, build regional innovation ecosystems, and the 18 are there. Now we're building the transformative tech platforms. We knit those platforms together. We connect it all together with Orion. That's the strategy. Uh, I like it uh, because it covers the province. I worry a great deal about communities that have access to technology and those that don't. Um, and this is one way of ensuring that no matter where, if, as long as you're you know, roughly close to, to one of these places, you will be able to get access to the tools uh, that are being developed around transformative tech. So 
That's the pitch. That's what we're doing. Uh, Senjen uh, uh, is, is a part of that here in Kanata. And, um, well, I'll spend the next 12 months or so trying to get to that, get to that end point. That's it. Thanks very much.